This is a Creative Nomad 2, one of the early entries into the digital audio player market. Now, if you've used a Creative Nomad before, I suspect it would be one of these, a jukebox. The Nomad 2 uses smart media cards and supports up to 64 megabytes of storage out of the box, whereas the jukebox has a micro drive hard disk and 6 gigabytes of storage, nearly 100 times as much. But today we're looking at the less popular flash media device. The Creative Nomad was originally released in 2000 to go along with Creative's line of other products, such as sound cards and speakers, including the Sound Blaster Live. The Nomad 2 was available in three different packages with different smart media cards included, a 32 megabyte for 200, 64 megabyte for 330, and no card for $100. The one I have here is the bare minimum model, and we can see on the back that the Smart Media card is sold separately. Thankfully, since this is 18 years after this device came out, I can make it rain Smart Media cards. I have a bunch of Smart Media cards from my days of using a Game Park GP32 Blue, so I'm glad to have acquired these over the years for it, because these things still aren't cheap today, and it's even worse if we use Creative's pricing from 2002. This amount would have come out to $1,300 based on how much they charge to get them with the player. Alright, now let's get this thing open and try it out. Wow, I can't believe this 18-year-old battery hasn't started leaking in the box. So, in the box you get the player itself a rather nice leather pouch, a cabled remote that doesn't work with modern phones, a pair of creative brand wraparound headphones, a USB type B cable, the driver disc, a demo disc, the manual, and a quick start guide. All right, before we put the battery in and turn this thing on, let's just take a look at what we have on the outside. So we have a little D-pad made up of the play, pause, stop, previous and next buttons, an AB button, repeat, a menu button. On the side, we have a DSP button, which probably allows you to change between the digital sound effects that this thing has, an erase button, which probably goes with the next button, the record button, because this thing has a microphone right there that allows you to record audio directly to the device, a digital volume button controller, unfortunately, I prefer to have analog control for that. And on the other side, a single lock switch and the USB port. Now on the top, we just have a headphone jack that has a four pole connector because it has the controls built into it. And on the bottom, there is a little hidden compartment that contains contacts for a dock. Now I'm not sure if a dock was ever made for this thing, but Maybe in another video, I'll take a look at what pins this has on it and see if I can make something that works with it. For now, though, I just want to experience this device as it was meant. All right, I've got a brand new AA battery, so let's pop it in and try this thing out. Oh, no media detected, which makes sense. I haven't put a smart media card in yet. And we have a menu. Now we don't have a whole lot to do on here right now except maybe do some voice recordings, but let's get some music on here first and try that out. So time to install the drivers and check out the demo disc. All right, let's go ahead and get the driver disc installed now. Yep, leave it to creative to have music during their installer. Well, that took no time at all. Ah, yep, it's Windows 98. Blue screen on restart. All right, well, I do believe we're ready. Try out the MP3 demo disc. Uh, I don't know why Firefox needed to be open for the MP3 disc, but okay. Maybe it's just an HTML file inside? Yep, all HTML. Let's just try welcome. All right. 
music catalog. Choose genre. Uh, I want electronic. Ooh. That's, that's it? That's all I got, huh? Why, why is it an EXE from eMusic MP3? Um, okay, let's see here. Music, MP3. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have a lot of MP3s encoded as EXEs? No, they're all, they're all right here. I don't know. Let's, let's try A star. Let's see what that is. That is very not for me. Let's see if there's anything else that... Ooh, here we go. You're currently not connected to the internet. Well, um, that's not true. So, the CDDB service they're using is clearly gone. This song called Heavy Drugs. I don't recognize anything on here. Well, I think that's it for the demo disc. Let's try putting some music on the player now. All right, now before we plug this into the computer and try and put some music on it, we need to put a memory card in. So we can open the battery door on the back and slide this in right here. Now you'll see right here this moved. This is a lever to eject the Smart Media card. So we'll want to make sure that's up all the way, indicating the memory card is fully in. And now we're ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and plug this in so we can transfer some files onto it. All right, so here in the My Music folder, I found a demo track that I really think you guys are going to want to hear. So let's go ahead and transfer that over. See how long this takes. It's, uh... All right, the one song is definitely going to be good, but let's put a few more on there. So let's go to the uh, CD drive. Okay, so... Let's go with Disco's Revenge. Oh, yeah. You you can't manage the music while it's uh, transferring. That's wonderful. Let's see if multi-select works in this. Whoa! Demo was 700k? This is 60 megabytes. I wonder if these are 320 uh, constant bitrate. I do want to see if this can play 320 kilobits per second MP3s, because the Maximum PC article that showed the pricing says that it's capable of it, but the back of the box only says it can do 128 kilobits per second. Okay, so let's do this. Ah, we can multi-select. Excellent. I have really no idea what I'm picking, but uh, those seem pretty good. So, let's see how this goes. You know what? It just occurred to me. Wait a minute. I'm really smart. That was 6 megabytes. Duh. 60 megabytes would have basically filled the memory card. All right, it's all transferred onto there. Let's, uh, let's hear how it sounds. Welcome to the experience. Left channel. Right channel. Welcome to the experience. Left channel. Right channel. Don't stop. Well, playing the demo tracks are fun and all, but I think it's time we check out the main feature of this that drew the ire of the record industry. Ripping your own CDs. Alright, I've got the CD in there, now let's try and rip it. Uh, that's... you gotta calibrate my disk drives? That's kinda strange. Okay, I guess I'll put another CD in. All right, it's, oh, it's just gonna go right into ripping, okay. Okay, I can see here that it's ripping at 128 kilobits per second, which isn't really what I want. 
Let me see if I can figure out how to change the sound quality. Alright, up in the menu here we have uh, just 128 and ugh, 64. Ah, here it is. Deep in the menu we can find a custom bitrate option for MP3. Alright, let's go ahead and fill in some ID3 tags and re-rip the song in a higher quality. Alright, I'm going to play both versions back to back to see if you can hear the difference between them. I don't know if it'll translate well through YouTube, but let's give it a shot. So, here's the 128 kilobits one. And here's the 320. The difference is very noticeable to me in person. Now I think 320 MP3s actually makes this a usable device today still. I am a flak man myself, and this can't hold a candle to something like my Fio X5. But I would consider actually using this. It is kind of cool that it's an old MP3 player, and it doesn't sound that terrible. I've had a lot of really cheap MP3 players in the past that would just choke and die on 320 MP3s. Being one of the first MP3 players, I'm very impressed it can handle that. Alright, so we've determined it's actually really good at playing back audio. So let's see how good it is at recording audio and try out the built-in microphone. This is an audio recording test to see what the microphone sounds like on the Creative Nomad 2. This is an audio recording test to see what the microphone sounds like on the Creative Nomad 2. Well, that was alright. It's only meant for recording voice, and it was definitely intelligible, so I guess mission accomplished. If you're curious, that voice file wasn't recorded as an MP3, a WMA, or a WAVE. It's some kind of proprietary file format that VLC can't even play. And while we're in here we can see that the music manager just dumps the mp3s into the root directory of the smart media card. And now I've saved the best for last. The inline playback control remote. Now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you may have seen the one where I created one of these myself for use with my Fio and my phone. I'm a big fan of these for music players, so I'm really happy that this came with one. Now, I want to compare something here. I'm going to start the music player up by just pressing the play button like usual. It's going to go back to the main menu because that's what it was doing last. So let's go ahead and shut it back down. Now I'm going to hold the play button on the remote. It automatically went back to playing music instead of going back to the menu. Not only that, it resumed playback at the same point where I stopped it last. That is just an awesome feature to have right out of the gate for an early MP3 player. How did they not all have that if it was done this early on? Now we have all the other usual features you might expect. We can pause, we can continue, go to the next track, can go back, we've got volume control. So you can just do everything you need from the remote. And then when you're done, you can hold stop, and it shuts off all from the remote. So when the back of the box says you can stealthily control your mp3 player with the remote, they're not kidding! You never have to touch it! Okay, there is one more thing to test, but um, I don't think I'm gonna do it right now, and that is a 128 megabyte smart media card. Now, this is the one that I use in my Game Park GP32 Blue, so I don't really want to format it or anything, and when I try and power up the player with it in here, it doesn't actually fully recognize it, um, so yeah, it doesn't show any storage space there, and when I try to open it to browse files, unknown media format. Now it could be that the smart media card is formatted to a different format that this doesn't recognize, but I have all my game park stuff on there, and video games take a lot more space, so I'd rather leave those on there rather than format it and use it for music. So. Maybe in the future I'll try 128 megs on this. Just for now, it's I don't really want to have to move a whole bunch of files around. So, yeah. 
It does claim to be able to support 128 megs though. Well, the back of the box shows how much time 128 megabytes would hold, but the side of the box says it only supports 32 or 64 megabyte cards. Now, there is an update available on Creative's website that they are still hosting, so there is a possibility I could update the firmware on this and have it support larger cards. The firmware updatability of this device was actually a big selling point and is advertised right on the front of the box. So maybe someday in the future I'll go ahead and try updating it, but for now it works and I'm happy with it. Well, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about the Creative Nomad 2. It's not the first MP3 player, it's not the best MP3 player, but it's a pretty solid MP3 player. Being able to play 320 kilobits per second MP3s makes this thing actually considerably usable to me. So when I'm feeling like going with something a bit more nostalgic, this is going to be at the top of my list of something to choose. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at a really interesting and unique device that's just cram-packed full of features. And I'll see you next time. Cannot escape your destiny.